Hello, my name is Sam Boring, and I'm a regional extension agent with Alabama Cooperative Extension. And this presentation will cover growing specialty mushrooms in the state of Alabama. There's a growing market for specialty mushrooms. Um, as you can see from these statistics from the National Agricultural Statistics Service, sales of specialty mushrooms have, have grown in the past few years, past 10 years. Um, while the number of producers has went down, uh, the value of sales has gone up. And this is because uh, consumers are becoming more familiar and starting to enjoy the products more. Um, you can find more of these specialty mushrooms in places like high-end restaurants and uh, health food stores and um, natural food stores. Um, they're, all, they're all selling some of these specialty mushrooms. The main one that this presentation will be covering will be shiitake some other varieties um, coming up at the end. So again, the main one that I'm going to be talking about is shiitake mushroom production this is because shiitakes grow the best in the climate of Alabama um, and there's already been some production systems that have been developed. Um, the, the main one that I'm going to talk about is log production system. This is where you grow shiitake mushroom on hardwood logs um, at your farm kind of in the woods. And there are a number of ways to do this. You can, you can uh, have them fruit and produce mushrooms based on natural conditions. If you do this, you'll have fruiting in the fall and the spring when the weather conditions turn and they hit certain temperature levels, then it'll, it'll be a natural fruiting and the mushrooms will pop up. You can also you know, inoculate the logs and then go into the forest fruiting schedule if you do a forest fruiting, you'll get these logs to fruit and produce mushrooms about every nine to 13 weeks apart. And you can get three to four fruitings a year if you force the logs into production. Beyond logs, the way to grow shiitake mushrooms is using a, what they call block growing, which is where you have bags of sawdust or grain and you grow the mushrooms uh, inside in a controlled environment. So for shiitake logs, you, you will need some equipment to get started. Um, the main one that you'll need are the logs. Um, you're gonna have to use hardwood logs, you know, softwood logs, things like pine logs just don't work. That's not gonna work. Um, but a lot of the hardwoods that grow in forests in Alabama, things like oak, hickory, beech, maple, and sweet gum, tulip, poplar, they work, work really well for growing and producing shiitake mushrooms. So especially things like sweet gum, where there's a lot of sweet gum people's woodlots and it's not a very you know expensive tree um it'd be good use for, for those sweet gum trees so to, to produce the shiitake logs you're going to have to cut the logs in, in the lengths about three to four feet you want them to be about three to eight inches in diameter it's key that you inoculate them with the mushroom spawn uh, within two weeks of cutting them otherwise they dry out and they're not very good um, they don't produce a lot of mushrooms we used to say that you want to do this early in the spring when the sap is running, but, but kind of new information has shown that you can inoculate them basically throughout any time of the year and they'll produce pretty well. Uh, besides the logs, you'll need a high-speed drill to drill holes in the logs. You'll need the mushroom spawn itself, which come in either plugs or sawdust that you'll put into these holes. Then you'll cover these holes with wax that you melt. Um, and then if you're gonna do a forest fruiting system, you're gonna to need to soak tank. It's also best to have some metal tags or spray paint just to track uh, what kind of wood it was uh, when you inoculated it. And if you're gonna do a forest fruiting system, it's best to keep track of different groups and how they go through your forest fruiting cycle. So for shiitake logs inoculation, you will need to get some mushroom spawn and they do sell different strains um, based on weather conditions, uh, cold weather strains and warm weather strains and wide ranging strains. The ones that work best for Alabama are the wide ranging strains. Uh, they'll produce generally throughout the year, um, especially if you're forest fruiting them, they'll produce throughout the year. Um, but it can be best to, to not put all of your, you know, not put all your eggs in one basket and maybe try uh, to do some buff, buffer with, you know, maybe get a little bit of cold weather strain if you're going to try it, but but you should probably go with the wide range of strain for most of your log inoculation. And like I said, you can either get the, the spawn and 
in bags or you can get the plug spawn. If you get the plugs, it'll just be wooden dowels and you'll just uh, hammer them into to the holes you drill. If you get the bags of sawdust, it's been inoculated, you'll get a little inoculation tool and then you can just fill up the holes with the, the sawdust that's been inoculated. After you do inoculate them and cover them with wax and put them in a nice shady area, it will be six to 12 months before you start uh, seeing fruiting of mushrooms coming out of these logs. It's just the time for that shiitake spawn to, to run and, and to colonize the logs and to, to um, start decomposing the logs and producing mushrooms. There are a number of sources of spawn out there, especially on the internet. I've listed some here. If you're in Alabama, I would, I would suggest this top one, uh, Fungi Farm. They're a new company of guys that are that are producing spawn in Alabama. That would be a good way to get some spawn that's that's for our local conditions and that's uh, from a local business that, that will be there to help you out. In terms of management for the shiitake logs, after you inoculate them, um, you're going to want to stack them. Uh, mainly, if you want to do this, you want to you want to keep them off the ground, you know, and you want to encourage airflow between them. Uh, you, you know, you want room and space for those mushrooms to be able to grow out uh, on all of the surfaces of the logs, and and you want to keep them off the ground so that they don't get infected with other bacterial or they get too wet. Um, so there's many different ways to stack the logs, and you do want to. You do want to keep them outside in a shady area in a canopy or under burlap. Uh, this, is, this is crucial. One of the most, you know, one of the ways that where this can go wrong is if the logs dry out. That's one of the main ways that you're going to not get production on your shiitake logs. So if they get too dry, this can happen in summer months where it's hot, and it's dry, we're not getting a lot of rain, especially if they're in direct sunlight, the logs will, you know, they might dry out. So you want to put them in a canopy or under a burlap. And if it gets really hot, you might want to consider applying some irrigation. Um, some sprinkler, sprinkler lines on them just so they can get wet and stay wet and have good moisture content for those logs. If you want to use a, a forest fruiting system, use an example. You want to use uh, a new uh, a tub there. Um, don't reuse one from on your farm. Get a new one because because you are going to be producing fruit out of it. Um, and then what you want to do is is you want to take your total number of logs and you want to divide them into um, eight to ten different groups. You want to take a group and you want to soak that log for anywhere from eight to twenty four hours. And you want to pull it out of the water and stack it, and then we'll start producing mushrooms over a three day period. You can get about a week's worth of production and then you want to put that group, you want to rest it for at least eight weeks. Um, so then you can, then the following week, you can get a different group and go through this process again. And if you follow this forest fruiting schedule, you can get, uh, each group can go through three to four times and you can get consistent production throughout the year. There is a potential to make some profits on this. Uh, these enterprise budgets were developed through University of Kentucky, and they are based on uh, a, a good price, getting a good price for shiitakes. These days, you can get anywhere from six to twelve dollars a pound. Um, and, and as you can see, if you can get you know five hundred logs and you're forced fruiting them, um, you can make some money. You know, over over time, especially if you have a lot of the equipment initially, and you have the logs and you have the chainsaw, um, that can really you know, cut down on your expenses and then you're just kind of doing, doing production after that. Moving beyond the, the log system and into what they call block grown systems, which is where you're just going to grow in bags and you're going to grow inside. Um, you can see it's a, it's a lot a different type of operation here. If you are doing the block grown system, the advantages are you're going to get a lot more production, you're going to get quick turnaround year-round production. You have a lot more control every aspect of the production system from fruiting, from the strain you're going to use, from the species you're going to produce. Um, but with that intensification do come some challenges that you need to, it's going to require climate and environmental control. You're going to have to control temperature, humidity, lighting, and CO2 in your controlled environment. Um, this can 
mean you're going to have to get some, some more equipment and some more industrial equipment, like a steam box, industrial pressure cooker, and a batch mixer. Example of some of the, the more intensive equipment that you're going to need to do this block growing system. Growing media that's generally used is, is either oak sawdust or wheat bran or wheat straw. Um, and there are different ways to do this. You can, you can buy the bags that are ready to fruit and just, just control them and have them fruit and then discard the bags and get, and then get pallets delivered to your farm of ready to fruit bags. But if you really want control and you want to um, you know, maximize how you use the resources and what you're doing at every step, and you probably want to start you know, buying and mix, mixing and sterilizing and inoculating the growing media yourself. I was mainly talking about shiitake, but there are a lot of other species out there, uh, things like oyster mushrooms, and there's all kinds of varieties of oyster mushrooms that you can grow. Oysters is probably the second most in terms of recognized by consumers. Um, and then once you move past that, there's other things that you can grow, things like lion's mane, um, other ones, chestnut mushrooms or wine cap mushrooms. But if you're gonna grow something like the lion's mane, it's not, um, commonly recognized as a mushroom. It doesn't have that stem and cap look that people recognize as kind of a different look to it. And you can be kind of some resistance there from consumers just because they're not familiar with the product. And you might, you know, it might take some explaining and if you're selling it at a farmer's market, you might have to explain what it is and how to grow it and how to use it and kind of do that educating of the consumer part, which, which can be a challenge. But again, the sky's the limit in terms of other species. Um, you know, mainly shiitake and oysters are the, are the big ones because that's what people know and they recognize and they like. In terms of marketing, uh, most of the marketing for these mushrooms is going to be direct market. There's not really any wholesalers out there for, for specialty mushrooms, so it's going to require the grower to, um, to reach out and to find those markets, whether it be you know, taking it to the farmer's market we're making connections with, with high-end restaurants and doing deliveries for them, or connecting with you know local whole food or health food stores or international grocery stores. Um, it's another good place to, to sell these. Um, if you can't find those those markets close to you, it's possible to to dehydrate and to dry these mushrooms and to sell them online. But it does take the work of, of the grower to reach out and find those markets. And then there are opportunities out there. It is a, a niche market and it can be a high value crop. Um, you know, $12 a pound is a good price and, and you, know, you can uh, really get that price point and, and really make a lot of money growing it. Um, it's a unique product if you're at a farmer's market um, and you bring it and attract people to your stand at the farmer's market. Um, if you have a wood lot that's just kind of passively sitting there and you've got a lot of sweet gum, um, you know, it can be a way to cut that sweet gum, especially if you already have all the tools, you know, the drill, um, all you need to order is the mushroom spawn. You know, you can cut all that sweet gum and inoculate it and leave it out there and under the canopy and you can use some passive forest farming income and just, just leave it and just go harvest it, you know, when seasonal conditions right and start to fruit. And there are lots of resources out there. There's a growing amount of resources and bond producers, good amount of literature and people doing and trying different things and there's growers groups. Uh, so you won't be alone in this if you do uh, look into it. And beyond that, there are, there are ways besides just selling the mushrooms. Um, you know, if, you, if you get into it, you can start hosting workshops where you can uh, show people how to inoculate their own logs. You can even you know, bring logs that you've already inoculated to the market and sell those logs themselves so that way the consumer can just, just take that log home and then they can get production of mushrooms. There can be challenges though, uh, especially if you're doing kind of a forest farming and you're just leaving the shiitake logs out in the woods, uh, you really have some uncertain fruiting schedules. And it won't be, won't be consistent production, you're really gonna have to, to put more effort into it whether you're doing forest fruiting to get that predict, you know, consistent production. There are a few pests that can get into your shiitake logs. Uh, the big one is going to be slugs. So if, you're, if you've got a bunch of shiitake logs, keep an eye out for slugs and, and watch them because they can get up in your logs and start eating the mushrooms. 
can be a lot of labor, especially at first when you're you know, chainsawing these trees and cutting cutting the logs. And especially if you're doing a forest fruiting, that's you know it's a lot of logs that you're going to have to soak and dunk in tanks and then pull them out of the tanks and stack them up. It can be a lot of work, especially at first. And if you do want to move into a more intensive style of production, it will require more knowledge and it will require more space and specialization um, and some more intensive tools and that you'll have to have to acquire. And it can be a challenge to find markets as well, especially if you're not, you know, in or around an urban area, if you're in a more rural location, um, those, those markets for, for people purchasing specialty mushrooms you know, aren't, aren't going to be close to you. Um, so that can be a challenge as well. This is really only the tip of the iceberg in terms of growing specialty mushrooms. There's a lot of resources out there. If you want to do the shiitake logs, I encourage you to look up uh, the Alabama Cooperative Extension System publication, the DUNT0025. It really walks through every step of growing the, the shiitake mushrooms on logs. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of other information out there. Um, so reach out and look at this other information. And if you have questions, you can always contact uh, Alabama Cooperative Extension. All right, thank you.